what's good y'all and welcome to my review of the circle that is internal <laughs> had to do it had to get that joke out there one last time before you know because after this i'm probably not going to use the circle that is internal joke again which you know then when they get that reference shot i see you man but um Overall, man, I was actually pleasantly surprised by the Eternals. I ended up actually loving this movie. Now, some of you guys may know, I have the interesting history with the Eternals. Because a while ago, a couple of years, like last year, no, no, like last year, the year before that, um, you got before the movie even started filming, I saw like this tweet from MCU Direct. They were like, I think it was saying that there was going to be like Gary Turk and the Eternals. I was like, oh, great, you know, rolling my eyes at it. Like I mentioned there, a guy jumped the guns. Like I said, I don't know shit about the Eternals. So for all I know, one of the characters in the Eternals are actually gay, and they're not like just shoehorned like third one. They're one of the main, one of the already established characters, gay or whatever. And <laughs> you guys may remember me, especially guys if you guys saw my Captain Marvel video, why the movie didn't work. Uh, that it, you know, you guys probably already saw this. But in there, I had a gift of me jumping off, of, like this kid, person jumping off, you know, off the off, out of this window. And then this Brie Larson stand came at me, you know, tell, basically telling me to kill myself. A bunch of other SJWs decided to jump, decided to, you know, join in the fray, and I had my fun, you know, replying back to them, man. That shit was hilarious and crazy, and I can finally say that I have finally had someone tell me to kill myself on Twitter. I have finally fully been initiated into the internet, ladies and gentlemen. So you had that. <laughs> and then, as, and then once the trailer started, and then you, of course, have, which, this was the one that I didn't really get, at the Oscars, once, you know, Chloe, what was her name? Uh, Chloe Zuha, Zuan, Zuan, if I, I apologize for butchering that name, um, won her Oscar. Everyone was like, everyone started simping over the Eternals. I'm like, bro, we haven't even gotten a trailer yet. Calm the fuck down. And then once the trailer started going on, you guys know that I actually wasn't that interested in the movie. I wasn't that excited. They didn't do much for me. The first trailer, but the second one was a lot better and I was a little bit more excited for it, but still, I was not that high for the Eternals. And so then, even when I went, when I finally went to the theater earlier today and watched the film, you guys follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you guys know that I said I'm mostly here out of obligation rather than any actual hype for the film. And while I was pleasantly surprised, man, I end up loving the movie a lot more than I thought it was, I would still say this is still one of my, probably my personal, uh, what for me anyway, one of the weakest of the MCU movies, and definitely I would say the weakest outside of What If when it comes to Phase 4. I'll go more to why I think that is a second, and I can definitely see why this movie's kind of divided into why it has like a 48 on Rotten Tomatoes, a 6.9 on IMDb, a 53 on like Metacritic, because I'm looking at the Google page right now. I can see why move why people are more kind of iffy towards this one than a lot of the other MC movies that we have gotten. And yeah, man, so without further ado, man, let's just jump right in. So the movie is directed uh, by Chloe Zua, Zu, Zuang, Zuha. Like I said, if I'm butchering that, apologies if I am. And of course, stars Angelia Jolie, Kit Harrison, Richard Madison, Gemma Chan, Solemn Hynek, and Don Lee. And the plot of the movie is the Eternals who race an immortal being with, super, with superhuman powers who have secretly lived on Earth for thousands of years, reunite to battle the evil demons. And so, like I said, I was pleasantly surprised by the film, but like I said, this wasn't, but this is definitely one of my least favorite MC movies. But before we let's talk about it, let's talk about my plots. First off, the cat. The cast is great. I loved it. Almost all the cast gave, gave really good performances. Angelia Jolie, I think she was probably... Angelia Jolie and um, Richard Matt, Madden were probably my personal favorites because um, Angelia Jolie, you know, fantastic actress, you know, played Laura Croft. Uh, I like Richard mostly just because Icarus was a really cool character. I liked Icarus. And he's basically his Marvel Superman. <laughs> That's basically what he is. And they even, like, ref they even make a Superman reference in the movie, which... Completely shocked me. I was like, wait, 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 wait. We have the MCU referencing DC. What the fuck is this shit? It was like when I went on when I first started using HBO Max and I, and I found that there were Marvel movies on there. I'm like, how is this even possible? Why are these not already on, Di on Disney Plus, you know? But um, he was great, man. Don Lee was fantastic, who you guys may remember actually from Train to Busan, which I actually saw over on, on October twice, actually. Once the first time we saw it was dubbed, because Pe Peacock had it, and because Peacock had it, and they only had it dubbed, which I thought was hilarious. Which, the dub for it was great, actually. I mean, they had Chris Sabat, the guy that voices Senku, so obviously I was a fan of the dub. And then once Amazon uh, added it later on in the month, that's when I watched it in its original Korean language, which was also fantastic. His performance there was fantastic as well, which, by the way, 
<laughs> I'm probably gonna get labeled a racist for this, but yo, does anyone else think that, that Don Lee looks exactly like Benedict Wong? <laughs> I swear to God, they look like twins, you know? They like almost look exactly like each other. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. I don't know if they are secretly related or something. I don't know if I'm secretly a fucking racist or something, but uh, <laughs> that's something I even know when I watched Train to Busan. I actually thought first, I thought that was Benedict Wong when I, when I was watching uh, Train to Busan, because he looks so much like him. But anyway, so he was great. And so, and the rest of the cats I thought was pretty good as well, if you consider. Um, one other thing I loved with the film was definitely the overall like, art style in this one with like the look of the celestials, the other planets and the creatures in line we see from the other planets, and of course the deviants himself. I love the, de the designs for deviants. I thought they looked absolutely fantastic, man, and I absolutely loved them. That, all, every time they were on screen, especially when we started to learn more about like the history of like the Eternals and like kind of some of the more other cosmic ship in the MCU, with um, the other planets and celestials and all that shit, we saw like you know different creature designs. They looked absolutely amazing, man. I thought they looked really, really fucking cool. That looked really, really good. Love the designs of them. Um, um, uh, the music I thought was also pretty was pretty good as well. The action scenes were also fantastic, especially around the beginning. The last one is you know your typical mass massive MCU CGI fest. Which I, also, which I still also thoroughly enjoy. But the fight scenes at the start of the movie when it's just like one of the Eternals, maybe a couple of the Eternals versus one of the Deviants looked absolutely amazing. I love the way they were shot, man. Seriously, shout outs to the seven, shout outs to Chloe Zha, Zha, uh, the Zha. Uh, Zahao, Zhao, however you say her last name, shout out to her. Like the cinematography in general in this, in this movie was really, really good. Shockingly good. Probably one of the better looking MCU movies, I would say. Um, I wouldn't go as far as say it was as good as Shang Chi's, but this one was also the cinematography. Uh, the cinematography in this movie was also fantastic. Man. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, of course, most of y'all are probably wondering what I thought of Fatos. Fatos, Fatos, Fatos. I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, because as you guys know, because you know, and they wouldn't shut up about it. He is the MCU's like first gay hero, even though Jerry. From Jessica Jones predates this shit by like five years, but I guess she doesn't count because of the Netflix series. I don't know, like literally, like this is probably one of the most things I found annoying about the Eternals and kind of like the media around and all that shit is like everybody is losing their damn minds over Fatos and uh, Fatos. I'm probably butchering his name. Uh, by the way, Brian uh, 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 Tyree Harry. Fantastic performance, loved him. He was a comic relief character, and I loved every time he was on screen. He was absolutely entertaining, man. I loved him. So, just wanted to throw that out there before we continue on. But, um, I don't get why everyone was losing their damn minds over him. Being like, yeah, gay representation in the MCU, let's go. Which I got no problem with, by the way. But I'm like, y'all were dead quiet for Jerry when Jessica Jones dropped. The fuck? <laughs> why are you losing your mind here, but not there? Huh? The fuck? She's playing my Trinity, for God's sakes! What the hell? Where, where are y'all at? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? It's fucking stupid, man. It's fucking ridiculous. I find, I just find that hilarious, man, that everyone's losing their mind over this, but they were dead quiet for Jessica Jones. Just find that hilarious, man. But anyway, he was great. I thought his character I thought his character overall was fine. <laughs> Obviously, he was just fine, man, but I thought but he was very entertaining, and I definitely did enjoy him while he was on the movie, man. But yeah. Like I said, four performances and the characters I overall were pretty good, but no one really, I don't think really that many characters stood out to me outside of like, outside of really Icarus. I think he was the one the stand up one. And Sprite, mostly just because she's named after a fucking soda? Like, why is she named after a soda? <laughs> why, who names their character Sprite? <laughs> I'm sure someone's gonna be like, oh, actually, she's based off like some, like, I don't know, Olympian god or something. But I can't, but when I hear Sprite, I think of the fucking soda. <laughs> When I hear Sprite, I think of the soda, man. And, and like I said before, she was fine as well. I was shocked how young she is. She's only like 14, 14 years old, the actress that plays her. Because I thought she was like 16 or something, but nah, she's like really, really young. But um, yeah, man, I <laughs> someone please explain that to me. Why is she named Sprite? It doesn't actually have to have, it doesn't actually have any correlation with the soda. I just thought that was funny, man. I don't know about y'all, but I just thought that was hilarious. Um... So yeah, he was great. The rest of the cast was good. The music I thought was all were really, really good as well, man. And uh, yeah, but the action set pieces were great, especially in the beginning when we saw was like used like one of the Eternals versus one of the Deviants. I thought those were great. The art style overall really enjoyed. I loved the look of the Celestials. I loved the look of the other of the Deviants we saw. I loved the look of the other creatures and like planets we saw throughout the film, man. This one looked really, really good. Like I said, before, the cinematography in this movie was really great. Was really, really good. But um, 
that's all really much I have to say about it in terms of positives. Now let's get into the negatives of why I think this is probably one of the weak one of my one of the weakest MCU movies, at least to me, and definitely without the weakest in phase four outside of what if. Which uh, what by the way guys you guys are wondering what I thought of what if since you know, the season has completely concluded. I really enjoyed it, but that's probably the my least but that was probably the weakest thing in phase four, I think would we'll say I think I, I think I even like the Eternals a little bit more than what if. But what if was still a pretty solid show, all things considered. But um the reason why I'm not that big high on this movie as I am, as I was for Shang-Chi or Black Widow or really any Disney Plus is just because the story and the characters are really nothing to write home about. The story, which of course I said before, is basically the Eternals finally banding back together to defeat the Deviants. It's fine, it, it works for what the movie is, but it doesn't really do much for me. And the characters, as I said before, all of them are fun. The actors do a great job playing them. Angelia Jolie and, like I said, Icarus were probably some of my personal favorites. But just I just really could not get that attached to any of them. And I think what really exasperates this issue is just because of how strong the new characters were we have seen in other Phase 4, you know, uh, things. Like Loki, Shang-Chi, Black Widow, Shang-Chi and Black Widow especially, you know, uh, Loki, Black, um, um, WandaVision, and, um, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I overall thought all of them had overall better stories and overall much better characters in terms of the new characters that they, that those, you know, TV shows and movies introduced. That, which I think that kind of exasperates the, Eternal, the, uh, the Eternals problem more just because none of the characters are really all that, you know? Like I said before, they're good. I wouldn't say there was anyone I hated, but like, there wasn't really that many characters I really got attached to like I did for Shang-Chi or, um... Or for um, uh, for uh, uh, Yelena, or the Red Guardian, or um, female Loki, or whatever, you know, um, you know. So that thing, so that's kind of, so that could just also be another reason why it wasn't that highly, just because of how of how high the bar was for Phase Four up to this point. How it's just been banger after banger after banger for all of them, and then you have Eternals, which isn't as good as them, so it kind of makes it feel like it's not as good more. So because of how great all the other ones have been so far for Phase Four, I don't know, but um. Yeah, man, like, so yeah, like, that's probably my biggest problem I had with the movie, was just, like, the story and characters are just not that much to write home about, especially in comparison to everything else we've gotten in Phase 4, which I think did that all that so much better, man. But yeah, overall, I still really did enjoy this movie, and I would definitely say, if you were someone that was really hyped up for the Eternals for whatever reason, man, I think you will have a blast watching this movie. And the person, the post and end credits were, were pretty interesting, which I'll talk more about in the spoiler discussion, of course. But, um, yeah, man. If you're someone that was hyped for the Eternals, you'll definitely have a fun time with it. You'll definitely probably enjoy it a lot more than I did. But for someone like me, where Eternals didn't really do much for you, the trailers didn't do much for you, I think you'll still be pleasantly surprised and still enjoy the movie. But I don't think anyone, I don't think any of us will be putting this in, like, our favorite MC, or, like, our top ten favorite MC movies. Or it's going to be, that's going to rank highly amongst everything else we've gotten in Phase 4. Uh, up to this point, you know, but um, yeah, man. Overall, I love the movie. I really enjoyed the action set pieces. I thought the movie looked amazing, and I'm definitely interested in Eternals too, which we know we're getting eventually. But yeah, man, with, yeah, man. I would definitely say between the cosmic, uh, between the cosmic shit, I'm more hyped about Guardians than I am about Eternals, man. But uh, leave your thoughts down below in the comments, man. And we're gonna get jumped around the spoiler section. So if you guys, if you guys don't want to, don't want to get spoiled, I'll give you guys my final verdict. And that's when you guys leave. Everyone else, let's continue. So overall, I'm going to give the Eternals a nine out of ten. Guys, like I said. Fantastic. I loved it. I really enjoyed the action set pieces and I felt the movie was amazing. But like I said, the story and characters just didn't do that much for me, man. Especially in comparison to everything else we've gotten in Phase 4. So anyway, guys, without further ado, let's just jump right into spoilers discussion. So before we jump right into the actual, like, mid credit scenes and the end credit scene and kind of like what I thought of my father, which actually, excuse me, I actually had to look up an explain video on this shit because I had no idea what I was looking because like I said, I don't, I know next to excuse me, next to nothing about the Eternal, so I was like, what's this? Who's this? What's this? What's that? You know, I had to look at this so and be like, okay, what the hell is this? Why, and why, and should I be hyped for what I saw, man? You know, we are talking about that, but one thing I want to talk about first up, first up, I was shocked at how many of the Eternals died. Like, like two of, like, the main ones end up dying, like, midway and early on in the movie. So, uh, Salma Hayek and Don Lee both died, which I was I was shocked by Salim Hayek because she's in so much in the trailer. She's, like, really, you know, pushed forward in the trailer. Like, she's, like, the leader of the Eternals or at least this group of Eternals. So I was like, I was shocked, like, oh, shit, she dies in, like, the first, like, 20 minutes? 
God damn, this is some psycho type shit, you know? But Don Lee, I was most disappointed with because I'm like, oh, come on, can this man go one movie without dying? <laughs> because I loved him so much in Train to Busan, and if you guys have seen Train to Busan, spoiler alert, he dies. <laughs> so he dies in Train to Busan. So I'm like, oh, God damn, can this man go one movie without getting killed off, you know? And he was like, he was probably one of my favorite, he was probably one of my favorite Eternals, man. I love Don Lee. Every time he was on screen, man, he was absolutely entertaining. And I also, I don't know if this was done on purpose, but I noticed his weapons were like these gauntlet things, and I don't know if that was a reference to Train to Busan or not, because if you guys, if, if you guys have, of course, seen Train to Busan, you would know that in the, like, midway through the movie, he has, like, his arm, he has, like, his wrists taped up in this with, like, some shit around them to, like, enforce so the zombies can't, like, directly bite his skin. So I don't know if that was meant to be, like, some sort of, like, nice little nod to Train to Busan or something else or just a coincidence, but I noticed that connection, and I don't know if any of y'all picked up on that. But anyway, one scene I want to talk about real quick that just had, <laughs> that just had me and everyone in the theater dying. <laughs> and everyone in the theater dying, man, which was this scene where it's around the end of the movie where you have Sprite, like I said before, I don't know what she's named, it's her fucking soda. You have Sprite talking with, uh, Sir, uh, Siri, I believe her name is, uh, Gemina, Gemina, uh, Gemma, Gemma Chan, if I'm saying her name right, uh, her character. Um, they're like, she's like, she's like, she's like getting ready to like, you know, turn to try and like, to, to try and like shut off the new eternal that, or the new celestial that's going to be, you know, that's going to be emerging from the earth and destroying the planet. And she gives off like, you know, this very heartfelt speed about how she doesn't want this to happen, how she wants to be with Icarus. And then <laughs> Druid comes out of nowhere and hits her in the back of the head with a rock. <laughs> she gives this heartfelt and this man's like, yeet. Everybody, including me, was dying. <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, man. Oh, that was so funny. She goes, his heart felt beat, then just... <laughs> and then it so just gets knocked out of the rock. Oh, man, everyone in the theater was dying at that moment, man. Another part that went off, this had nothing to do with the movie, man, but... While I was while the trailers were going up, I saw the I saw a trailer for this movie called that for this movie called House of Gucci. I believe is what it's called, which is actually also directed by Ridley Scott. Really, so Ridley Scott has two movies coming out this year. Strange, but okay. It probably had to do with the pandemic. And everything got delayed. Still kind of surprised, but you know whatever. And <laughs> at the end, once the, once the title card pops up, you know they're talking about Gucci and all this shit, which is obviously beats up the clothing brand. This kid who. But was a bit of a nuisance in the movie. Like he would like like use like he would like tapping on like his popcorn bowl. He's I think it was him. Some kid was tapping on, the, on like their popcorn bowl, and I'm just it got kind of annoying, but not too too bad. But anyway, after the trip, once the title card pops, he says Gucci is terrible clothing, and everybody just starts burst out laughing at that moment, <laughs> including me, man. I was like, you know what? I'll let this kid say his piece. He, if he wants to talk, he can talk. You are goaded for that joke, man. <laughs> Perfect timing and everything. You good, fam. You're all right in my books. <laughs> but yeah, man, that was absolutely hilarious. But anyway, so let's talk about the post credit scenes and the mid credits. So in the mid credits scene, we find that we get introduced to this new character called Star Fox. No relation to the Nintendo character. I was shocked when I found that was his name is N2. And we find out that he is also an Eternal, and that he's actually the brother of Thanos, and he's played by Harry fucking Styles. Yes, you heard that right. Harry Styles is now in the MCU. What the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, he is Thanos' brother, no less. We go from Josh Brolin to Harry Styles. Josh Brolin to fucking One Direction. <laughs> now listen, Harry Styles is actually a pretty good actor. He was very good in Dunkirk. Then again, he wasn't in the movie that much. I don't think he even had a line of dialogue, but he was good. <laughs> he was good in Dunkirk. So I'll let this see, I'll so let it play out and see what happens. But I was shocked to see, to find out about him. And he's based, and I looked up some videos on him. He's based some other characters from the Eternals. He's with this troll. This is all mostly set up for the sequel. This is mostly set up for the, for the second Eternal movie, and maybe he'll make some occasional appearance in, like, maybe Thor 4 or, God, or, or Guardians 3, maybe. We don't know, but obviously the post credit scene is the one that most people are going to be talking about, and the one most of y'all know. So, in the post credit, which, by the way, on the fucking Google page, they spoil both of them. They call uh, Kurt he um, Har uh, Harnigan's character, they straight up call him the Black Knight, and Harry Styles is on the credit scene. They're, these are, like, the first... They're like on the front of it, the first three with Angelina Jolie. Don't know why Google's out here spoiling the movie like that, but whatever. 
Anyway, we find out he has like this giant, he has like this box in front of him. He's hyping himself up. He opens it and we find out that it's a sword. It's the Ebony Sword, which is a sword used by the Black Knight. And as he's like right about to pick it up, you hear this voice, which I actually did not pick up on uh, when I first saw them, when I first, when I saw the credits. It wasn't until after I did some like digging on the, on what the post credit scene was and all that, where I found out who this was. And it's actually the first appearance of Maharshala Ali as Glee. Hell yes. I Like I said, I didn't lose my shit in theater, but once I found out that it was him, I lost my shit, man. That is fucking cool, man. And could this mean that we end up seeing the Black Knight in the um, in the Blade movie whenever that comes out? Hopefully. Which would be cool, man. And also, and now, Black Knight is a character that I'm not super familiar with, but I have seen a couple times in uh, Savage Avengers and uh, a couple times in Symbiote Spider-Man. So I'm a bit more familiar with him, so I'm definitely kind of interested and curious to see him whenever he makes his next appearance, which will most likely be in the Blade movie. But yeah, man, that was pretty interesting, and I'm hyped that we actually got to see Blade, or at least hear Blade, for the first time in the MCU. That was hype, man. That was pretty cool, man. But yeah, man, of course, leave your thoughts down below in the comments what you guys thought the post credits mid credits scenes and your theories where, you know, this could lead for the MCU and all that shit. If you guys are fans of the Eternals, you know, go right ahead. But anyway, guys, that is when to end this video off. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.